Hello friends, it's Mal with Made by Mani and Mal. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be making a wildflower themed tumbler. We're going to be doing like a bouquet or a basket of wildflowers and I am so obsessed with how this turned out. So I really, really hope you love the tutorial. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for new videos every Tuesday and Saturday. I've got a ton of info down in the description box for you. We've got links to everything that I'm using in this video today, as well as links to all of our social media pages, a link to our Facebook group, which I am so excited about. We've got a lot of really great things planned in that group. I love getting to chat with you guys, see what you guys are making, and and really get to know you guys better. So the link to the group is in the description if you would like to join us over there. And of course, I've got some discount codes for you as well. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm really active down there, so don't hesitate to ask. No question is dumb. Don't be afraid. I will try to help you the best I can. Okay, I think that's it. Let's go. We're starting with a 30 ounce curve from Craft Haven. I've already sanded it down and washed it with Dawn dish soap. So now we are going to tape off the bottom portion. That's going to end up being our basket or our bouquet wrapping or whatever you want it to be. So I'm just taking my electrical tape, going a little bit up the tumbler. This is very similar to how I did the basket for my hot air balloon tumbler. So what we're going to do next is wrap off the top portion of our cup because we don't want to spray paint that just yet. And we're going to use gold metallic spray paint from Rust-Oleum to paint this bottom. And once it's all painted, I'm gonna let it dry about 30 minutes and then use the epoxy method to apply my glitter. I'm applying the tiniest bit of epoxy that I can and I'm using the exact same glitter mix that I used for my basket in my hot air balloon video. So we're taking a Babwa, Charming, Juliet, and Lyanne, a custom mix of all four of those, all from PDB. And we're just covering that bottom portion of our cup with that beautiful mix, oh my gosh. Once I'm all done glittering, I'm going to immediately remove that electrical tape and let this cup sit and dry maybe about about two to three hours. It shouldn't take too long because you didn't use a ton of epoxy. So once that was all dry, I sealed it with a coat of Quick Coat from CCDIY to make sure that the glitter does not move at all during the next step of this process. I've taped off that bottom glitter portion of our cup so that we can spray paint our fade on the top half of the cup. I'm using quite a few spray paints and we're just going to do a fade moving up the cup. So I'm starting with Himalayan Blue from Montana Colors. This is like a true sky blue, just painting a little strip right up against that tape line where our gold glitter is. And then we're going to take Luminous Green next next and build the fade up coming from that blue and we're going to repeat the same process with all the colors so next is martina's blue bringing that up this is a like beautiful color i'm obsessed with martina's blue and then next we're going to build that color up a little bit i want the blue to be really prominent so you can always go back and just add more you know kind of cover up if your fade sprayed too big or whatever you can always go back so then we took rustic pink and sprayed that and then I'm taking light yellow from Montana Colors and see I kind of sprayed a little too much so I'm going to go in with my flat white but then I'm also going to go back in with rustic pink and cover that up and kind of reposition those colors or redistribute those colors to make sure that we have enough of each color and that you can see each color in our fade. I let that dry about an hour, and once it was dry, we were ready to apply our glitter using the Tacket method. For the Tacket method, we're going to be using Monica 7 from Peachy Olive Glitters as our glitter, and then of course we're using Aileen's Tacket over and over, which is the adhesive that you use for the Tacket method, obviously. Now for the Tacket method, you can mix a little bit of water into your Tacket if you want to, or you can just use the Tacket straight. I did mix in a little bit of water just to give it a little bit more liquidity. Is that a word? Anyway, I'm taking my sponge brush and brushing this on. I'm brushing it on really, really, really thin because we want it to, one, dry quickly, and two, you don't want too much like gloopy adhesive because we're going to end up like rubbing down this glitter and you don't want goopy glue all over your cup. So once I've got the tacket applied, I'm going to take my heat gun and just kind of run it along my cup to heat it up, make sure that our tacket is pretty much dry before we apply our glitter. You don't want wet glue for this because we're going to be, like I said, rubbing it all down and wet glue will not give you the results you're looking for. 
So once we're at that good tacky point with our tacket, I'm going to apply this glitter just all over the cup, making sure I get really, really good solid coverage because we don't want to go back in and have to reapply glitter after we've already like burnished everything down. So we're going to tap off any excess. I'm going to clean up that excess glitter that dropped onto our paper, and then I'm going to start burnishing. So basically you just take your fingers. If you want to use a gloved finger, you can. I just go in with a bare finger and we're just going to start burnishing that glitter, rubbing it down, and it's going to give this really cool kind of like opal effect. So the glitter flattens out. You have a lot of excess that will end up falling onto your paper. And I just like to throw that away, really. You could probably save it, but it's got tacket on it, so I just throw it away. Um, once you rub it all down, you'll get a really pretty shine from your glitter that's totally different from the shine in a glitter that you would get applying with Mod Podge or the epoxy method or just like straight how it was before. So once we've got this on, we're gonna let this dry about an hour and then I'm going to go in with my epoxy. I'm taking 30 milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy and I'm going to seal the glitter portion first the bottom portion that was glittered with the epoxy method like normal and then i'm going to seal the top of the cup with the rest of the epoxy i'm gonna let this sit and cure about 8 to 12 hours and then i'll be ready to move on to the next step for our wildflowers we're going to be using clear water slide from hayes paper company this is the water slide i've been using lately and it's really good i really like it so i got this clip art this whole pack of clip art all came in one one big bundle on Creative Fabrica. I will have that linked in the description below. And I just cut out a bunch. I cut out more than I thought I would need just so I would have options as I was placing everything onto the cup. So I started with these bouquets that already come arranged in the pack. I cut out a few of those, put them in my water and started to apply them. And then I printed some really, really large flowers that I thought could go up around the top because I really want this to look like a beautiful bouquet of wildflowers. So I'm applying my water slides just how I normally would. I've been using a silicone brush lately when I apply my water slides and I don't know what I was doing before, but this is a really easy way to get all of the air pockets and all the bubbles and ridges and everything out of your water slides. So I'm really digging this technique. I'm just going to go around my cup and add bouquets, kind of arrange my flowers, add some individual flowers in there, and just kind of go where the flowers lead me, really. Um, I'm applying these on top of each other. I'm kind of overlapping them because you don't have anything super perfect and straight and lined up next to each other when you have a field of wildflowers or a bouquet of flowers. So don't be afraid to overlap, line them up, layer them, whatever you think looks best. I ended up placing a few I didn't like and I pulled them off and just put something else there. So also don't be afraid to change it. If you put it on and you don't like it, you can always take it off and try again. Since you're going to be applying so many water slides at one time, I would recommend cutting out a few, putting them in your water, applying them, and then cutting out more and putting them in your water. I don't think that these last very long if you like leave them in the water if you want to cut them all out and then put them in your water like right before you're ready to apply them that would be good too I just kind of cut as I went as I saw what I was wanting I didn't want to cut out all those flowers and end up not using them I'm going to continue adding flowers until I'm happy with the way our field or bouquet looks and then we will move on to our next step I'm going to let my cup sit and dry for a couple hours and then I'm going to add our final little finishing striping. I cut this stripe out of regular brown or a Cal 651 vinyl and it's 11 and a half inches long by 0.15 inches wide and I just wanted to add something to kind of finish off this bottom portion, make it look a little bit more professional and clean. So just added that thin little stripe and I think that brought it all together. Once we have that on there, we are ready to apply our final coats of epoxy. I just did one final coat of about 25 to 30-ish milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy, and I just made sure that it was totally smooth with that vinyl poking up. You don't have to worry about water slides because they're flat, obviously. So as long as your cup is totally smooth, you are good to go. Once this cup was all cured, we were all finished, and holy moly. I am so obsessed with this design. I love how the flowers pop with the background and I think this is going up at the top with one of my favorite cups and favorite designs I've ever done. So hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial and 
I cannot wait to see what you come up with using these wildflowers. If you use different flowers, anything like that, please be sure to tag me in your photos at Made by Manny and Mal. I cannot wait to see what you come up with. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in our next video. Okay, love you. Bye.